Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is season two, I guess, for this. Uh, if you didn't see the preview video and you're just jumping into this, uh, some differences that I'll address. This is not live. If you haven't heard, uh, the world is a little crazy right now, and uh, so is my personal life. So recording these in chunks is going to be the easiest way for me to get these done uh, and still get them out there. So thank you so much for bearing with me through these changes. I'm very much looking forward to this book. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorites uh, of the Redwall books. Yeah, I have my water. No tea or hot drink this time. I think we'll see if we can go these few without it. I'm going to try real hard not to bump the mic. Because uh, I am still recording these in one take. And now that I have, as tradition, wasted the first minute of this, uh, check the link for descriptions to support. Uh, I have a Patreon down there. Thank you to my, at the moment, one supporter. You are a champion. Uh, and now, I think with that... I think it's time for us to jump into this next book, The Legend of Luke, by Brian Jakes. The young must grow old, whilst old ones grow older, and cowards will shrink as the bold grow bolder. Courage may blossom in quiet hearts, for who can tell where bravery starts? The truth is a song oft lying unsung, some mother bird protecting her young, those who lay down their lives for a friend, the echo rolls onward, it seldom ends. Who never turned and ran but stayed, this is a warrior born, not made, living in peace, ay, many a season, calm in life and sound in reason, till evil arrives a wicked horde, driving a warrior to pick up his sword. The challenger rings then straight and fair, justice is with us, beware, Beware. Book One, Martin. Chapter One. Summer's first morn was like no other. Trimp the roving hedgehog wandered through the moss-flower woodlands like one in a dream, drinking in the beauty of moss-flower country, so different from the cold Northland coast whence she had traveled. Dew was still upon each leaf, delicate mist tendrils wreathed into green gold sun shafts, twixt mighty oak, slender rowan, and stately elm. Birds trilled sweetly, butterflies fluttered silently, bees hummed busily over flowers, ferns, and lichen-clad rocks. Trimp's heart felt as light as the haversack on her back. She ignored hunger, feasting her senses on the glory of her surroundings, and the delight of the new season. Swinging her ash stave jauntily, she skipped a little jig and broke out into song. You lark on high, O minstrel of the sky, sing out, sing out, now sing you joyously to Mother Nature and her earth. This is the golden summer's birth, a wondrous sight to see. Hail, fine tall trees, your leaves dance on the breeze, rejoice. Rejoice and sway so gracefully. You feel your blossoms soon give way to ripen fruit some sunny day. Oh, please save some for me. Sing out, rejoice. Let all who have a voice call out so sweet and happily. Oh, woodland, vale, and grassy lea. Good day, my friend, to thee. As Trimp ended her song, a voice hailed her. And good day to thee too, pretty one. She halted at the edge of the ditch. Two sturdy old hedgehogs stood on the path at the other edge, grinning cheerfully. They were alike as peas in a pod. One of them called to her, We'll help you cross yon ditch, missy. Stay there. Taking a few steps back, Trimped winked cheekily at the pair. Nay, you stay there. I'll help myself. With a short run and a hop, she dug the long ash stave into the bank and pole vaulted neatly across. Both hedgehogs wriggled furiously until their back spikes rattled, an ancient hog form of applause. Trimp immediately took a liking to the jolly pair. She stood directly in front of them and lowered her head formally, and they did likewise until all three creatures' head spikes touched in the traditional greeting of their species. Introductions were made. Good sirs, I'm called Trimp the Rover. 
Mum, I'm called Ferdy, and that fat one's my brother Cogs, both of Redwall Abbey. Cogs snorted, pointing to Ferdy's ample stomach. I ain't as fat as old Ferdy, am I, Miss Trimp? She giggled. You're as tubby as one another. Ferdy and Cogs exchanged wry glances. She's pretty, all right. Pretty impudent. I truthful and pitiless, just like all the pretty ones. She's thin, though. You think she could help pull a log? Miss Trimp ain't thin. She's slender, but strong. I'll wager the way she leaped yon ditch. She can pull logs. Trimp pursed her lips shrewdly. Of course I can pull logs. I could tow a log with both of you sitting atop it if I had a mind to. But I'm feeling very slender today owing to the fact that I have an empty haversack on my back. So, towing logs means payment in food. Ferdy and Coggs exchanged more wry glances. Miss Trimp knows what she wants, don't she? Oh, she certainly does, mate. That hog ain't soft as moss nor green as the grass. We'll have to feed her. Only when we get back to Redwall, though. Then she can tuck into Vittles till she's like two of us and put together. So, is it a bargain, ma'am? Trimp banged her stave butt down under the path decisively. Done! Lead me to your log, friends. It was not a very big log, more like a heavy sycamore limb. They attached ropes and pulled, and the wood slid easily along the dewy grass of the pathside. Trimp was full of questions for Ferdy and Cogs. What is this Redwall place, and how far off is it? <laughs> Missy, you won't say that some day. Any beast will be able to see it from a good league off. Right, Cogs? Right, Ferdy. When we get round to this bend in the path beyond that big grove of oaks, then you'll see it, Trimp. It is going to be a great abbey, but it ain't properly built yet. Martin reckons three more seasons should see the main abbey building showing its spy atop. Trimp suddenly stopped pulling and smote her forehead with an open paw, as if she had just remembered something. Of course! I've heard other travellers mention the great redstone building in Mossflower. You say there's a Martin there? Is he a mouse? Son of Luke the warrior? Ferdy shrugged and beckoned her to keep pulling. Oh, he's a warrior, sure enough, missy. As to his father, I think some beast mentioned his name was Luke. Hey, eh, Cogs? Cogs switched the rope from to his other shoulder. Could be, mate. No beast knows much about our Martin. He keeps his past fairly quiet. Mark my words, though, Trimp. The noblest fighter that ever wielded a sword is Martin the Warrior. He fears nothing and battles like ten beasts. Oh, looky there, ma'am. That's Redwall Abbey, see? Trimp's eyes grew wide with wonder. Never had she seen anything built on such a grand scale, even though it was still incomplete. The abbey reared out of the forest on the path's east side, fashioned from mighty blocks of red sandstone. There was a high perimeter wall with battlements and a broad walkway behind them, and visible above this outer wall the main building stood two-thirds finished. Buttresses, arches, and columns could be seen between the wooden scaffolding. Mice, moles, squirrels, otters, and hedgehogs, and voles labored busily, hauling, laying, chipping, carving, and carrying all over the structure. Ferdy and Cogs chuckled at Trimp's astonishment. Ho 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 ho! Shows what honest, hard working woodlanders can do when they've put their paws to work, eh, miss? Aye, building Redwall Abbey, a place of safety and cheer for good beasts to live in, with walls that stand the worst of any vermin foes could think of. Trimp enjoyed the pride in her friends' faces as they spoke of their home. She cocked her head as a shallow, booming sound echoed out. What's that noise? Are they doing something special? Cogs winked at her, then patted his stomach. That's the call for lunch. We're just in time. The three hedgehogs pulled their log through the impressively solid wall gates, which were opened for them by a mole. He tugged his snout, saying in quaint mole speech, er, Good day to ee. Boy, okay, mate. See, little log made be prettier in both the unes. I'll be you called, miss. Trimp shook the formidable digging claw of the twinkle-eyed mole heartily. I'm Trimp, sir, ten times hungrier than I'm pretty. A deep smile crink crinkled the mole's velvety face. Gertly pleasure to meet ee, Miss Trimp. I me four mole, you're a boots. If any be hunger, then fear not. Usins can vitly up to your spiky tips. <laughs> Leaving the log by the gatehouse wall, the three hedgehogs followed the four mole across the broad lawns to the pond, where scores of red wallers were washing their paws before lunch. Trimp joined them, while Ferdy pointed out various individuals. That and swimming about is Skipper of Otters, a chieftain, 
Pretty Mouse Wife by the Reeds is Columbine. Jolly looking beast with her is Gonf, Prince of Mouse Thieves. And the little one is their son, Baby Gonflet. Uh, Dinny Formal, you already know. The hollow booming sounded out again, and this time Trimp saw that it was made by a squirrel beating on a hollowed section of the tree trunk with two wooden batons. Ferdy nudged her. That's Lady Amber, our squirrel queen. Come on, youngin, off to the council afore you sit down to eat. Trimp followed Ferdy and Cogs to the orchard, where tables and benches were laid out in an open square. Ferdy bade her stand back until all were seated. The traveling hogmaid could not wrench her eyes from the food. It was like being at the center of a delicious dream. Cauldrons of fresh vegetable soup steamed savory aromas around new oven-baked bread shaped into biscuits, batches, and loaves. Cheeses arranging from deep yellow to pale cream and studded with nuts, celery, and herbs were placed between heaped trays of woodland salads. Small tarts showed the rich hues of damson, apple, blackberry, and greengage through their pastry lattice tops. Jugs and pitchers of ale, fruit cordial, and cold mint tea were being brought to the tables by servers. Trimp held her kerchief politely to her mouse, mouth, <laughs> lest any bees see it watering. Ferdy tugged her tunic hem and whispered, Come on, missy, don't be afraid. Nobody will eat you. He led her round the table nearest to the abbey. A huge, ancient badder, badger, bent with the weight of many seasons, gazed at her with kind brown eyes and nodded. Welcome to Redwall Abbey, little one. I am Belle of Brockhall. You look as if you have traveled far. Trimp curtsied deeply. She liked Bella on first sight. Ma'am, I am Trimp the Rover, so traveling is my business. Since late winter I have been walking from the Northlands. Fourth clans? Did she say fourth clans? Next to Bella, the tiniest, oldest, frailest mouse Trimp had ever seen was sitting on a small cushion chair, wrapped in a thick, warm shawl. The mouse sitting on the old one's other side leaned close to her and spoke loudly. Northlands, Abbess Germain. Our guest has walked all the way here from the Northlands. He turned, smiling, to Trimp. The hogmaid warmed immediately to the sturdy beast, his strong features and friendly tone. "'Tis fitting to have one so pretty grace our table as guest on summer's first day. I am called Martin." The mouse named Gonf, seated close by with his wife and babe, winked at Trimp and called out, "'Aye, matey, and he's never called late to the table!' Martin smiled at his friend and closest ally. <laughs> "'Look who's talking! The greatest grub snatcher to ever lift a ladle!' Gonf pointed at himself innocently. Who? Me? I hardly ever touch food, matey. A crust and a beaker of water's good enough for me. His wife, Columbine, adopted an expression of mock surprise. Lack a day, it must be the birds eating all the pies and pa pasties I am forever baking. What do you think, Gonflet? Baby Gonflet chuckled uproariously. It's me and Daddy. We are a pinch of pies and pasties off a windowsill. When they be good and hot, us eating them up. <laughs> Gonf covered the baby son's mouth in amid general laughter. It was his idea, Columbine. He's been leading me astray. Trimp took her seat amid the happy red wallers. Old Abbess Germain waited until Bella brought order to the assembly by tapping a spoon on the tabletop. Heads bowed whilst the ancient mouse recited grace in a quavery voice. May good fortune never cease, where we build until the soil... Mother Nature grant us peace and reward us for our toil. Summer's come now. Life is sweet. Food is here for one and all. In good friendship let us eat as one family at Red Wall. Bella served Trimp with soup. Martin passed the bread and cheese. Columbine piled a platter with salad for her and the charming squirrel called Lady Amber topped up her beaker with fruit cordial. Trimp went at it with the best. Dinny Formal shielded his mouth with a paw, whispering to the skipper of otters, Oh, dearie me, I never afore see no beast tuck into a vittles like Ms. Trimp. Sir Gonf be eating like a buddy fly alongside that un. Gonf the mouse thief wrinkled his nose at them all. I heard that, matey. Shove that cheese my way and I'll show you what a dainty eater I am. Oh, Gonflet, get your sauce spoon out of my soup, you little bandit. Columbine smiled sweetly at Trimp. Like father, like son, I always say.
after lunch, Trimp volunteered to help Martin and his friends hoist a roof beam. Skipper and his crew were atop the half-timber dormitory, with mallets and pegs awaiting the heavy oaken beam. The jovial otter jiggled the rope in its pulley block and called down, Ahoy, mates! If we wait round much longer up here, we'll sprout wings and feathers and fly off. Gonf secured the rope to the beam and spat on his paws. Right, mateys, let's send her up with a will. Anybody got a good hole in river song to help out? Bella held up a paw in response. I'll do grumble dum tug if you like. A groan arose from the hauling party. Baby Gonflet clapped both paws over his tiny ears. Not that one again, Miss Bell. You all are singing grumble dum tug. Ferdy say Miss Trimpy be a good singer. Bella sighed, bowing slightly to the hedgehog maid. Trimp, no beast is forcing you to sing, but it would be nice if you'd oblige. Do you know any good hauling shanty songs? Trimp did, and she immediately sang out in a clearer voice. Away, ho, away, yo, hold hard and take her out, I'll tell you of the green hawk and a cat mo chop snout. Away, yo, away, ho, bend your backs and heave, ho, old rain a chop snout was a fox, a bad corsair to boot. He ran his vessel on some rocks while searching for some loot. Away, ho, away, ho, now bend your backs and heave, ho. So to the Northlands he did steer the green hawk to repair. A warrior who knew no fear named Luke was living there. Away, ho, away, ho, now bend your backs and heave, ho. The Corsair came with all his horde, I'll tell you, mates, it's true. Brave Luke took up his battle sword, and that bad fox he slew. Away, ho, away, ho, now bend your backs and heave, ho. Then Luke called his gallant crew, and Greenhawk did repair. He changed her name to Sainer too, which sounded good and fair. Ho, hey, ho, ho, hey, ho, now bend your backs and heave, ho. So Luke the warrior sailed away, he left the north and shore. He swore an oath that one fine day he'd come back home once more. Ho, hey, ho, ho, hey, ho, now bend your backs and heave, ho. The beam was halfway up when Trimp stopped singing. Martin had his footpaws dug in firmly, holding the swaying oaken bulk steadily with the rest of his friends. He stared at the roving hedgehog, gritting from teeth cl from between clenched jaws. What have you stopped singing for, Missy? Keep on. Trimp returned his stare, shaking her head. But that's all I know. I never learned the rest. Gonf slid forward a fraction as the beam began losing height. Urgently, he muttered. Then start from the beginning and sing it again, matey, afore we're all wearing an oak beam for a hat. Trimp sang the hauling shanty as far as she knew the verses twice before the beam was safe in the otter's strong paws on the dormitory top. When the others went off to new chores, Martin called Trimp to him. Walking on either side of her, he and Gonf escorted her across to the gatehouse and showed her in. The mouse thief took a flagon and beakers from a cupboard where he had hidden them and poured drinks for all three. Ninny Insider, I calls this. Comes from the old place down south the path where I live from time to time. They sipped the cold sweet cider appreciatively in silence. It was cool and shady in the gatehouse after the bright noon sun outside. Martin leaned forward. Trimp, where'd you hear that song? My grandmom, Wealth Tip Tip, used to sing it. She told me that she once knew a little mouse named Martin. Was, was that you? Gazing into his beaker, he slowly swirled the cider. That was me. I am Martin of Redwall, son of Luke the Warrior. My mother's name was Sena. Strange. I'd almost forgotten it until you sang your shanty. Sena was the name my father gave to his ship as well. Being little more than a babe at the time, I don't remember much. But it comes back to me a little now. Tell me, miss. What else did your grandmom say? Anything at all? Holding her beaker with both paws, Trimp sipped and pondered. Uh, there were names. Cole, uh, Denno, Coodle, and others I can't recall. Is that any help to you, Martin? I'm afraid not. But carry on, please. Uh, now let me see. Uh, she used to talk of old Twula, uh, Drun Tunnela, and uh, uh, Windred. Windred! She was my grandmother! Martin grabbed the hedgehog maid's paws. Think, did you have any brothers or sisters? A grandsire? What was my father really like? Tell me about Sena, my mother. Even though her paws were hurting in the vice-like grip, Trimp's heart went out to the warrior. 
I can only tell you what I know, sir. Grandmum died when I was very young. She told me that I was born on the Northland coast, but we fled when the slaves attacked a tribe settlement. Our family moved into the mid-North Hills. Then I became old enough, I left to go roving, and the first place I set out to was my birthplace on the Northland shore. Alas, there was nothing left of our old home, so I carried on roving, until I met Ferdy and Coggs, and they brought me to Redwall. Garnf placed a paw on his friend's shoulder. Steady on there, mate. You'll crush Miss Trim's paw. Martin released her and went to stand in the doorway, blinking to hold back welling tears. I used to know things, I'm sure of it. But after the injuries I suffered battling the wildcat Samina, I've hardly been able to recall a single thing. Do you remember Timbalisto? Gonf nodded. He was your friend from the Northlands who released us from sla- who we released from slavery and came here. A good mouse. Martin struck his paw hard against the wood the doorpost. We must have been crazy, both of us. He lived here, yet for some unknown reason. We never discussed our past. Poor Timble. He died the winter following the Great Moss Flower War. Gomf poured more cider for his friend. Mayhap was too painful for either of you to mention. What you went through when you were young'uns? Martin stared out across the sunlit lawns. You're probably right, Gonf. Perhaps it was. Trimp, can't you remember any more names at all? The hedgehog maid smiled pensively. Only that grandmom used to say if we didn't get stop our noise and go to sleep, Vilu Daska would get us. Yeah, aye, Vilu Daska. Does that name ring a bell, Martin? No, not a thing. Tis all too hazy and long ago now. The warrior walked off towards the abbey. Gonf watched him, sad for his friend and his forgotten past. I ain't seen Martin like that before, miss. Trimp put aside her drink and stood up. Only since I came to Redwall and sang that song. This abbey's beautiful place, Gonf, but I wish I'd never come here and caused Martin such unhappiness. I'd best leave. Gonf barred her path to the door, chuckling. Sorry, my young beauty, but I can't allow that, and neither would Martin or any beast that calls himself a red waller. Come on now, cheer up and earn your afternoon tea. I'll show you how I collect honey from our bees. You can lend a paw. They strolled from the gatehouse towards the northeast wall corner where the hives were situated. But I've never tried taking honey from bees, Gunf. Don't they have a nasty habit of stinging you? What? Sting me, the prince of mouse thieves? Never. Not as long as I pretend I'm a bumblebee and I sing a song while I steal the honey from under their noses, Missy. Trimp giggled. Oh, really, Gunf? What do you sing to a bee? Oh, this and that, you know. I usually start like this. Oh, fuzz, buzz, buzz, look who's a buzzin'. Good day, sir bee. I'm Gunf, your cousin. Trimp's laughter mingled with the mouse thief's song as the sun kissed noon air as they skipped paw and paw across the lawns of Redwall Abbey. And that's where we'll call it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you tune in next week. I'll be doing, uh, these will be streaming live every Thursday at 6.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. (laughs) Uh, Sorry for those of you that it doesn't work with your schedule. Luckily, uh, the streams are always available to watch after the fact. Uh, I do hope uh, that you are well, that you are safe, that you are healthy. Uh, I know these are some pretty crazy times at the moment of filming, uh, fresh into 2021. Uh, But uh, if you want to support this and what I do, uh, there are links to do so in the description. Uh, Special thanks to all of you who do support the channel, uh, even just by watching. If you enjoyed it, like, share, subscribe, the whole thing. Uh, If you want notifications, I think if you hit the bell by the subscribe button, Uh, You'll get notifications when my videos go up or uh, when I do a live stream. We'll see. I'm very excited to be jumping into this new book with you. And we'll jump right back in next week with Chapter 2. I'll see you guys next week. Be safe.